Hello and welcome to the third episode in our series on multiple sclerosis. In the previous episodes, we understood the definition, symptoms, causes, risk factors and prevalence of MS. In this episode, we will try to understand how this disease is diagnosed. Come, let us meet our expert. Most of the time when patients come with some history of neurological disorder, the foremost important thing is the clinical examination which a doctor does because MS is not just diagnosed based on the results of the investigations but also on the clinical examination which the doctor does. And after doing that, the doctor sees all the tests which are done and tries to collaborate between both of this before diagnosing multiple sclerosis. As I mentioned, first after the clinical examination is done, the doctor employs a lot of tests for diagnosing multiple sclerosis. It's not just to diagnose but also rule out many other disorders which can mimic multiple sclerosis. So the tests are MRI which would be a protocol which is followed usually of the brain, spinal cord and optic nerves and then the CSF. So CSF is a protective fluid which is there across the brain and spinal cord which is tested. The third would be some blood tests which are done. One of them is mainly to uh, rule out other infections and other mimickers of MS. And the fourth last is the electrophysiological tests. So these are the different tests which are employed in the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis and to rule out MS mimics. MRI is one of the crucial tests employed in the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. I would tell that there are three reasons why a clinician does MRI. The foremost would be diagnosing multiple sclerosis because it forms one of the crucial tests and it also lists out as to where are the different parts of the brain and spinal cord which is affected in MS. Second, second cause would be to rule out MS mimics. When I tell MS mimics, that means there are conditions which can uh, appear like multiple sclerosis clinically, but it is not MS. So that is the second reason why we do MRI to rule out a MS mimic. Third would be that a person of MS has been diagnosed, started on medications, but what happens is even the person is on medications, they may be not responding to the medications. So a clinician uses it to see whether the person is responding to the medications or not. So finally what I would tell is MRI is helpful for three reasons. One is diagnose MS, rule out MS mimic and then help in knowing whether the person is responding to the medications. So apart from MRI we also do a lot of tests. One would be the CSF test. The CSF what I mean is that it's a protective fluid which is there across our brain and spinal cord and it helps us in telling as to uh, how much is the immune system affected in MS and also sometimes it rules out other conditions which can be there. So first is CSF test, second is some blood tests which are done because as I said MS mimics, MS mimics would be few of the connective tissue disorders, vasculitis and rarely some infections which can come as multiple sclerosis symptoms. So these are the blood tests which we employ either to rule out these other differentials what we call it as which could be either in the form of infections or other autoimmune conditions. The last test would be the electrophysiological test. These are just uh, actually not for diagnosing but it just helps a clinician to know whether there is some functional abnormalities in different parts either of the eyes or the upper limb and the lower limb or the hearing system. So these are the other three tests which are employed that is the CSF test, blood test as well as the electrophysiological test. This concludes the third episode in our series on multiple sclerosis. In this episode, 
we understood in detail how this disease is diagnosed. We will be back with our next episode. Namaste.